Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Beth Carroll, and I oversee our recruitment and admissions team within the Office for Student Engagement and Practice here at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. My pronouns are she and her, and I've worked with our community for about nine years. Um, the University of Michigan School of Public Health is a great place to, to work, and we have excellent colleagues among our staff and faculty, and of course, we have a very um, exciting, vibrant student community as well. One of my favorite parts of my job is connecting with prospective and admitted students. It's hard to believe that we're about a month out from our priority deadline. Um, the majority of our programs do have a December 1st priority deadline, and of course we'll talk a little bit about that later. But a couple logistics and just things that I want you to know about today before we kind of dive into the, to the real meat of the conversation. Um, I'm joined this afternoon by two of, of the members of our recruitment and admissions team, Joyce and Levi. You can see them logged in, and then in addition to that, you can see next to their name their title, so you can see that they're affiliated with our team. Uh, they'll be answering questions in the chat, along with some of our current student admissions ambassadors, who you'll be able to meet and see in a bit. Um, you'll see also alongside their name that they're denoted as admissions ambassadors as well. Our current student admissions ambassadors are essentially a extension of our recruitment and admissions team. And they're here today to share firsthand their experience and to offer any advice to all of you. Um, so with that being said, please don't hesitate to ask any questions that you might have. In addition to that, our graduate student team this year has about 45 admissions ambassadors and some of them do opt to be on the website. So I'll have somebody from the team throw the, that in the chat so that you can take a look at some of our students um, who want to meet all of you throughout this admission cycle. Um, when you do review the information, please feel free to reach out to them via email. Um, and ask any questions that you might have. We truly want you to get a sneak peek as far as what it can be like to be a student here at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. So I'm gonna spend the next few minutes speaking with you about our school. I'm gonna highlight things like the application process, our requirements, and some of our timelines. Um, before we dive into that, though, I want you to know that we're going to be primarily focusing on our MPH, which is our Master's of Public Health, and our MHSA, which is our Master's in Health Services Administration that is administered through our Health Management and Policy Department. Um, we'll be focusing on those two degree programs mainly. So if you are specifically interested in our MS, which is our Master of Science or our PhD doctoral programs that are administered through the Rackham Graduate School, I would invite you to visit that website as well as connect with program coordinators about that. If you are though looking for just some general information about the school, I would definitely encourage you just to, to stay on and hear a little bit more about that because we certainly will touch on a lot of things in terms of the history, the community, the culture, to try to give you a sense of what, what it's like to really be here. Um, throughout this process, I would definitely encourage all of you to do your homework, like I said, and ask questions, um, You know, uh, look at different social media outlets, go to the website, um, talk to faculty, talk to current students. Um, and if you do end up getting admitted, I would really encourage you to make those visits to see what it's really like to live and learn in these communities. So with that being said, let's dive in here. And just to kind of kick off the conversation, wanting to make sure um, that we all have a, an understanding among us as far as what public health is. Um, certainly with the, the uh, onset of the pandemic, um, before that, you know, a lot of people didn't know exactly what public health was. That, that isn't a problem that we really are facing at this time, um, but just wanting to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So um, you can see at the bottom there that public health is defined as the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting physical health and efficiency through organized community efforts. And when you think about it, public health truly is all around us. It's the quality of the air we breathe. It's the flu shot you get at the pharmacy. It's the ethics of genetic testing. It's the creation of policies that govern our health care. Um, you can see also on this slide our, under our core areas of study, um, which essentially are our six graduate academic departments and programs where students can focus their degree. Um, most of our students do not have a specific undergraduate degree or set of professional work experience. So that's something um, that I definitely want to point out. Um, some departments and programs do have specific recommended and required courses that our faculty are looking for when they review your application. 
When you do go to apply, they prefer for you to have the majority of those completed so that they can see how you would fare in the public health curriculum. Um, we'll put in the chat there a link to those recommended and required courses and experiences to make sure that you're on track when you submit your application. If you do have concerns about that, we can definitely work with you to partner with our department program coordinators to see how they typically handle those specific situations. Michigan Public Health is pursuing a healthier, more equitable world through education, research, and action. There are definitely endless career opportunities within the field of public health, and you're bound to find your niche. Uh, recent career surveys from our graduates indicated that the top four employment sectors were hospital and healthcare providers, academia, consulting, and private industry. We do have a very robust careers team that assists our current students with finding full-time employment, internships, and all of our students have connections to a career database, and they have that service available to them um, from before they start the program and after they graduate and beyond. We call it a true cradle-to-grave service, so you know that you'll definitely be um, in good hands when it comes to finding a job, which is a big deal, right? Uh, so let's take a turn and get to know a little bit more about Ann Arbor and our public health community. Um, you can see a picture from campus here. Um, Ann Arbor is truly a, a vibrant city. Um, our students are definitely lucky to be able to live and learn in Ann Arbor, a, a pretty lively college town um, that is consistently ranked as one of the best places to live in the country. Please feel free to share in the chat if you'd like. If you've ever been to Ann Arbor or to the state of Michigan, we oftentimes um, refer to the state of Michigan as a, as a hand or the mitten, um, and we are located in Southeast Michigan. Um, Ann Arbor is home to more than 150 parks and green spaces, and the city is an exciting and diverse community. Our area certainly draws people really from all walks of life. Um, obviously, you'll find students, um, families, foodies, artists, of course, sports fans, especially this weekend. We have our big rivalry with um, Michigan State University. Um, so lots of excitement um, as both teams are undefeated if you've been following. And of course, outdoor enthusiasts as well. Um, the Huron River runs throughout the city and there are lots of bike trails, walking trails, and actually just a short walk from the school is Nichols Arboretum, which is home to the world's largest peony garden. And it is beautiful come June. Um, also, to give you a sense, if you're not super familiar, we're actually only about 35 miles outside of Detroit. Um, and with that, Ann Arbor offers a mix of small town charm and metropolitan energy. And if you are living on the coast and you're, you're not super familiar with our area, you know, Ann Arbor has many of the same amenities that you would find in a DC or a San Francisco, but on a much smaller scale and a lot more of an affordable cost as well. And of course, we partner with students in regards to living and learning, both on campus and off campus, and there are various different housing resources around the area. Um, we also have students who do commute from, I would say, about um, an hour uh, distance. In addition to that, there are several park and rides. Um, both within Ann Arbor, but also along the perimeter as well. Um, and our students can speak to that a little bit more as well as some of our staff. People truly get to work in, in various different, different ways as we kind of enter this new hybrid way of life. So we can definitely talk about that more later if you're interested. So next, let's get to know a little bit more about the School of Public Health. If you are interested in research, our portfolio is just over $80 million a year. We also have over 30 research centers. So if you are interested in research, that is definitely here for you as well. For a little bit more context, we're one of 19 different schools that are composed of the University of Michigan. We also wanna share that there is flexibility built into most of our curriculum that allows our students to take classes outside of the School of Public Health. We really want our students to feel as though they're the drivers behind those decisions, and we want our students to be able to tailor their degree to what they want it to be in hopes of them landing that, that dream job, you know, that they ultimately want to, want to find. When I speak with prospective students, one of the advantages that I mentioned about our school are the countless opportunities, resourcing, and network engagements that our students have access to. 
we encourage our students to take advantage of all that is around them. And I do want to highlight as well that we have services not only that live within your department or your program, but also on the school level and the university. So when we talk about um, you know, support and your team and you succeeding, um, it truly are um, a lot of players that are here to support you. And we want you to know that we're here to aid in that transition. This next slide showcases some of our numbers about our school and community. As you can see, we have just over a thousand graduate students here. Um, this includes uh, residential and a pretty large um, online program as well. Um, just over the past few years, we've launched fully online degree programs for an MPH and an MS. And we also have about uh, 200 undergraduate students as well. As a student at the School of Public Health, you'll have the opportunity to join over 40 student organizations, and those are within your department and program, but also interest-based as well. And then again, talking a little bit about the University of Michigan, um, the greater university has over 1600 student organizations. So truly there's everything, everything out there for all different types of people. And if there isn't something that you see that um, you're super interested in, you can always start your own and that will be supported as well. Year after year, uh, student organizations prove to be a very significant part of the student experience. And in fact, studies show that students involved in extracurricular activities become more collaborative, they build self-confidence, and again, going back to getting that job, they overall increase their marketability as well. Also on this slide in purple right in the middle there, you'll see our faculty to student ratio noted as nine to one. And I just wanna point out, I know we probably have some people logging around, logging in from around the country who are coming from smaller institutions. And, and it's pretty typical for us to draw people for graduate school from, from all over the, the state, all over the country and truly all over the world. Um, but I, I want you to know that we recognize that, that there are instances where students think of the University of Michigan as truly what we are, right? <laughs> the reality is we are a large public research institution and that can be intimidating and it can seem like a lot. Um, students might feel like they're just gonna be a number and they're gonna get lost among the masses. But again, just, just to remind you, we strive to break that down on every level. Um, we, we really want students to feel supported from every, every angle. And as a, a public health student, you'll also have a faculty advisor and you'll also have a department program coordinator who will work with you as a prospective student as well as a current student as well. And those teams look a little bit different in every department and program, um, but we'll be talking about that and sharing those people with you um, here in a little bit. So this slide outlines our graduate departments and programs. You'll see highlighted specific areas within each um, truly, we want our students to have a well-rounded student experience. In addition to that, we do have some certificate programs as well. Um, we can throw those in the chat. We don't have a specific slide as part of this presentation, but you can feel free to take a look at them. Um, these are certificate programs that will allow you to, in addition to getting a degree, also achieve a certificate within a specific discipline. Again, making you more marketable, more well-rounded, and um, hopefully fulfill some of your interests in other areas outside of your department. Um, typically, they don't take more time or cost more money, and students typically denote interest in those the fall that they start. Um, there are different information sessions held by the faculty leads, and one piece of advice that I would say when it comes to those certificates is knowing that you're interested in one sooner rather than later so that you can work um, to plan a curriculum and, and a whole plan that will that will meet your needs. So that's kind of the key there. But if you do have more questions about that, please let us know. So choosing the right degree. This next slide speaks to the school's various degree programs. As you can see, it is pretty comprehensive. Um, first, I want to draw your attention to the degrees listed under professional focus. Um, the Masters of Public Health is our flagship degree. And we also, uh, within that, offer a residential program that is here in Ann Arbor, um, more of your traditional program, I would say, that takes about two years and 60 credits. And then we also, as I mentioned, have the fully online program, again, in MPH and population and health sciences. And again, this is a fully online program. 
um, that right now takes about 20 months and 42 credits to complete. One thing that I will mention about the online MPH is that we do have new certificate programs associated with that, that allow students to um, focus some of their classes within a specific area. So that's something that we just launched this past year and we're excited about. So we can throw in the chat there more information about that. We also have our Masters of Health Services Administration. Again, this is available within our Health Management and Policy Department. This is very similar to an MBA, except for all the classes are tailored specifically to the healthcare field. If you are interested in health management and policy, one thing that I will note is that students do move quite regularly between the MPH and the MHSA within health management and policy. We find that um, applicants very, you know, turn into current students and then their experiences and their desires and their goals shift and change as they go through the curriculum. Um, so know what that is supported by the faculty and there is a process internally that you have to go through to make that happen. So again, if your if your interests are more research based, a Master's of Science or a PhD program, again administered through the Rackham Graduate School, is also available. And again, we're now offering an MS that's fully online as well. Over to the right there, you'll see some information about our dual degrees. At this time, this, the school has seven formalized programs, as you can see listed. Um, students interested in applying to a dual, dual degree program should apply to both schools separately as a normal applicant. And then if admitted to both, you can complete the two master's degrees within three years. In addition to that, you also can apply um, after you're already pursuing a graduate degree at another school. And there certainly are pros and cons to that. So we would encourage you to reach out to our team if you want to learn more about pursuing that opportunity. Um, students also can elect to participate in a self-initiated dual degree as well. And we can share information about that too. Okay, so this next slide talks about the application requirements. Again, focusing primarily on our MPH and MHSA application that is administered through SOFIS, which is the common application for schools of public health. Hopefully by now you've started an application and if not, that's okay. Um, one thing I want to note is that all supplemental application materials need to be sent directly to SOFIS. Um, our team at the School of Public Health does not receive any uh, application requirements. Essentially, you submit everything to SOFIS, they verify everything, and then it's released and signed off um, to us. And from there, we load it into our system, and that's when all the magic happens. Um, so just want to take a couple minutes to talk through some of these requirements. Certainly, if you do, do have more specific questions, we can talk about that or feel free to put them in the chat. So going down the list here of the requirements, um, wanting to note that there are two required essays. The first being the SOFA Statement of Purpose, which is about 1,500 words. Uh, within this essay, we want you to address questions such as why Michigan Public Health? Um, why are you interested in this department? and talk about your future goals and aspirations. Time and time again, I hear from faculty that this is where they want your voice and your passion to come through. There are many places on the application where we hear from you as an applicant. Um, so we truly encourage you to put your authentic self um, through when it comes to putting the, the words and the content together for this. Next would be our reflective essay. As you can see about 500 words, shorter one of the two. Um, a couple things associated with this essay. So this essay has been around for, I would say about five years. And essentially we, part of the reason why we created it was because we would run into applicants who had concerns associated with specific parts of their application. So we wanted them to know that um, we would, you know, take into consideration and we wanted to know what these concerns might be. That's part of it, right? Um, so if there are concerns that you have, such as a low GPA, um, lack of experience, um, you know, a lapse in work experience, whatever that might be, we want you to put it in the reflective essay. That's where faculty know to go and review um, anything that they should know there. One thing that I'll also say is, is make sure that 
if there are concerns that you have that you do share them, um, a lot of times, you know, it can be um, intimidating to, to be vulnerable, especially in a graduate school application. Um, but but it's better for them to hear from you than read between the lines and try to interpret something that may have happened, um, like a dip in grades or something like that. So, so please take the time um, to be thoughtful when sharing that type of information. Secondly, we want to know if there are specific characteristics or experiences you have that can contribute to our diverse student population. So um, feel free to add that into that reflective essay as well. We also require three letters of recommendation. When looking at this requirement, we want you to view it as quality over quantity, ideally, um, and really only we're looking for the three. Um, when it comes to an academic reference, we're looking for somebody like a professor, um, someone who knows your academic capability and can speak to you being successful in graduate school. Of course, when it comes to a professional, somebody like a, a supervisor, a coach, or a mentor, or somebody like that would, would fit well. Um, last year, the team put together some additional tips for letters of recommendation. So we'll throw those in the chat for you to reference as well. Um, definitely some great tips there. So wanting to, to talk a little bit about um, the standardized test score and that being associated with um, exams like the MCAT or the graduate record exam, the GRE, and wanting to just note that we have eliminated that requirement. Um, so that's not something that we will look at as a part of our review process. Um, and that is actually for all graduate programs this year. Um, one thing that we do have is a quantitative experiences statement where we're asking you to share a little bit about your academic and professional experience with data. Um, so please feel free to thoughtfully review that prompt on the website and we can throw it in the chat as well. Um, that is a, a new requirement that we piloted last year and it went pretty well. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to pull out and kind of group together these types of experiences all in one place. Again, so that faculty can hear from you and so that they um, know where to go to get this type of information. Um, and really, it's truly just to make sure that our, our admitted students are uh, prepared to take courses like our biostatistics course that all students must take. Um, so if you do have questions about that requirement, please let us know. Okay, so this slide, really the purpose behind it is just to get you thinking about all of the background and experiences that you've had. Um, we definitely recognize that we have quite a few people applying straight from undergrad, so these experience more be, may be more top of mind, but we also have some more um, mid-level and seasoned professionals. Um, typically, we don't have students with more than five years of professional work experience, but again, that does vary, and I'm just speaking generally in terms of averages just to give you an idea. Um, we encourage you to incorporate all of your extracurricular activities, um, again, both academically and professionally. Um, including things highlighted on this slide like research, professional service, and volunteer work. All right, so by now you're probably wondering, um, what does this look like? What am I getting myself into? So we want to address a little bit on this slide how your application is going to be evaluated. So all of the application components listed here are taken into consideration. There isn't one thing that's gonna make or break your application. <clears throat> I want you to know that your application will be reviewed by at least two faculty reviewers. And again, they're looking for the total package. Um, as a school, and you can read about this on our website, um, we practice a holistic review process um, when making our graduate student admission decisions. So this, this review lens ensures that no single factor leads to either accepting or excluding a student from admission. So definitely want to point that out. And if you do have more questions about that, please let us know. All right, so let's take a pause here for just a second. Please feel free to put in the chat who motivated you to pursue a graduate degree in public health. If you'd like to share that, please feel free. Public health is certainly a very um, service-oriented, meaningful career. 
And we always like to take time to reflect a little bit about how people found public health. As we said at the beginning, and maybe you've experienced this before the pandemic, not everybody knew um, what public health was. And certainly um, positioned where I am, we see things like the, the Fauci effect. Um, and we're all trying to kind of reassess where we're at in terms of where we're going. Um, but it's always helpful to see um, how people have landed into public health. Great, lots of mentors, freshman biology professor, summer internship, awesome. Well, it's great to hear that you all have those connections. Make sure that you, you keep them um, throughout your application. Your mom, that's great. Awesome. Very exciting. High school, that's even better, Katie. That's, that's pretty exciting that you found public health in high school. Awesome. Well, thank you all for sharing. We're just about through the notes here for today's session. Um, so again, wanting to give you a glimpse of the timeline, all of our graduate applications are open for the fall 2022 start. It's hard to believe that I'm saying that. Um, we do have some priority deadlines and very important deadlines coming up. Um, the first that I want to point out is our residential um, deadline, uh, which is December 1st. Um, with that being said, if you are applying via SOFIS, we would encourage you to submit within the next couple weeks to make sure that your application is verified and in our system by December 1st. There are some different deadlines associated with the online program. You can see them outlined here. In addition to that, wanting to just point out that um, our international applicants do have a hard final deadline for the MPH and MHSA, um, which is going to be um, January 15th. Um, so just a couple things to think about um, coming up as well. And of course, if you are interested in the MS and PhD, um, you should review our Rackham Graduate School website. So let's take a turn and talk about funding and cost in general. Um, we definitely recognize that cost plays a large role in your decision-making process. First and foremost, um, launch this past month um, was the FAFSA for this upcoming year. So we would encourage you to um, start that sooner rather than later. Um, so please take a look at that. Um, we offer uh, merit scholarships as noted on the slide. And if your application is complete, and submitted before December 1st, you'll automatically be considered for those scholarships. Um, it's important to note though, that there's not a separate application to be considered for those. Um, you can see we award about four, over 4 million each year and about 35% of our students receive an award. And for the MPH and MHSA ones, I'm talking about full rides, partial rides and quarter rides. Another thing to think about is that um, once you're admitted, then you're evaluated for the funding. So just so you know, the communications come separately. In addition to that, please make sure that you are checking the email address that you're putting on the SOFIS application because that is the email address where you will be um, receiving official communication from the School of Public Health. So make sure that, that you're checking that box. So as a reminder, our team is here to help. We um, want to support you through this process and we recognize that it can be time consuming. Um, so with that being said, please continue to communicate with us if you do have any questions along the way. Outlined on this slide are some of the key staff members who are available to assist you. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. It's truly a team effort when it comes to the application process and we're happy to help you. Um, also, we'll note the department and program contacts. Our team, as well as these people listed here, um, are really the experts in helping you through the process, talking about the curriculum and getting you everything that you need. Um, and there's a link there where you can view all of the department and program uh, coordinator information. And we also have our general team inquiry um, email box, which is sph-inquiries at umich.edu.
Okay, so that was a lot of information. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a turn and we'll have our current student admissions ambassadors introduce themselves. So if you'd like to put yourself back on camera, please feel free to do that. We have four ambassadors joining us today. They've taken time out of their very busy schedules and just coming off fall break, which was last week. So thank you very much for all of your time today. Um, but we'll go around and have them introduce themselves again by sharing their name, their year, their department, and their undergraduate degree and institution. So whoever would like to start, please feel free. I think it gets off. Um, hey everyone, I'm Jo. Uh, I am uh, technically a second year student in health behavior and health education, which we call it HBHE. Um, but because of some medical issues, I was only able to take classes part time last year. So my degree is going to take me three years. Um, so I'm in a sort of funky spot time wise. Um, I. Uh, did my undergrad at St. Louis University, um, which is in St. Louis. Um, and I did not study public health or anything close to it. Um, I studied theology in undergrad um, with a minor in social work and another minor in Catholic Jesuit studies. Um, and I also have my MSW from Boston College. So I went straight from undergrad to the MSW at BC. Um, and then worked for about five years, I think, uh, before coming back to Michigan for the MPH. Um, I could go next. Um, thank you, Joe. I'm Hannah. Um, I'm a first year health behavior and health education student as well. And I graduated in the spring from the University of Connecticut, and I majored in psychology and urban and community studies with a minor in human development and family sciences. I can go. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, my name is Morgan. I'm a first year here in the epidemiology department, specifically the hospital molecular tract. Um, I did my undergrad at UNC Wilmington down in North Carolina, and I got my degree actually in public health with a minor in biology. Thanks, Morgan. So I can go for last. Um, my name is Neil. I'm a first year master's student in toxicology at the Department of Environmental Health Sciences. I did my undergrad in food science at Purdue University, and I had some minors in uh, pet food processing and fermentation sciences. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I'll put in the chat another link to our current student admissions ambassadors. And again, if you have questions after today's session, you can always uh, reach out to them. Um, with that, we want to devote some time to answering any questions that you might have. So if you do have questions for our current students, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, it looks like we have one that just came in. So why don't we start with that to make sure that we're able to, to ask. Um, so um, talking a little bit about internships, um, can you guys talk a little bit about where you see yourself as far as um, what kind of internship you might be thinking about, what resources are available, um, anything that comes to mind? I know if you're a first year, that's definitely something that you're thinking about. Um, yeah, so I am a first year, but um, I would say one of my interests in health behavior and health education is injury and violence prevention. So. I'm looking in that area. Um, Michigan has a good prevention research cent center and an injury prevention research center. So I'm looking towards there um, and we'll keep looking around for that as well. There's some places back at home as well. Anybody else wanna share anything about what they're thinking as far as their internship? Uh, my two main uh, areas of interest are eating disorder prevention and um, consent education slash um, sex education. Um, so like very distinct. Um, and I'm, I'm not looking to do an internship that's going to like marry the two. Um, 
still very much trying to figure out what my internship is going to look like, what I'm needing, um, really like thinking about like what gaps are in my resume at this point and how my internship can help fill that. There is tons, tons of support uh, within the School of Public Health to figure out where you want to do your internship, what you want to focus on, um, helping you get those interviews, get things set up. Um, helping you figure out how it's going to all fit into your schedule, if you're going to do it in the summer or during the school year. Um, there's tons of flexibility and tons of support. Great, thank you. I just put a couple um, pieces of information. Um, again, we do have a careers team um, that supports students school-wide, but also within the departments, there are some resources. And then there also is the university-wide career center. So there's a lot of support depending on what you're looking for. And again, I would say also that quite a few students find internships through resources here um, from the hospital, the greater Southeast Michigan public health community. Um, and I think to alumni, um, we have a very strong alumni network here at the University of Michigan. And a lot of times they want to take in their own. <laughs> um, we have a significant population of students who get full-time employment from their um, internship experiences. I've also linked to some more information about that where you can see more about um, support. And also I would invite you to take a look at some of the actual videos in there that highlight some of our current students and in the internships that they did. Um, so please feel free to review that information. Also, um, I wanted to make sure, again, to highlight the recommended and required courses. Um, so that's recently added to the chat as well. Awesome. So I saw another question come in. Let's make sure that I'm able to find it here. Um, okay. Um, great question from Sharon. Um, Sharon's asking, what's your favorite part about your program and what is most challenging? So feel free, anybody, to just unmute and answer. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, that's a good question. I can, oh, oh sorry. No. Go for it, Morgan. Um, I chose Michigan mainly for the research opportunities, um, especially in the epidemiology program. So I've actually started to do some lab work and get some research done, which I really enjoy. Probably the most challenging has been just the transition from undergrad to graduate. I went straight through, so I haven't had any like work experience or anything. I graduated last spring. So it's definitely been a challenge adjusting to that. And this week was just midterms. So um, doing that and having that challenge, but it's a good kind of challenge. I enjoy it. Yeah, and just adding on to what Morgan said, I guess one of the greatest challenges is transitioning from straight from undergrad to grad, um, especially with regards to your program requirements. So personally, I have to do a master's thesis um, and just being able to navigate that in addition to classwork, as well as attending classes can be a kind of a time crunch. But I would have to say the best part about Michigan is everyone's super supportive, um, always replies to you timely through like emails. I know some of my professors use the communication platform Slack. I've had really good experiences with the graduate supervisors and it's just been a really pleasant experience here at Michigan. I know like coming in, it can be a little um, scary with the hyper competitive environment, but everyone here is really supportive of public health. Thank you guys. I think you touched on some, some important things. Um, one being a couple of you coming straight from undergrad, if you could talk to yourself, you know, probably eight months ago to prepare for graduate school, what are maybe some things that you wish that you did to prepare for the fall that you hadn't done? Any tips or tricks for these folks who might be um, in that situation in the near future? I'd say research, um, especially if like once time comes around where you got admitted, you know where you want to go, definitely research like the program, research what kind of um, opportunities there are, what you want to do. I did a little bit. I probably should have done it more because now I'm like, I feel like I'm behind looking for internships and stuff like that. So if you have a good plan of what you want to do, I think it's good to look into what the school can offer for you. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I was between going to grad school or going to get a job and taking a little break. Um, so I would definitely say apply early. And like Morgan said, definitely do research too and like find professors who are 
have interests, research interests in the same things that you're interested in. Like, I know I did that at all the schools I applied to, and it happened to be that um, someone here, Dr. Miller, has very similar research interests as mine, and that's why I ended up picking Michigan to begin with, but yeah. Yeah, I would, I would echo what Hannah just said. I know I didn't come here straight from undergrad, but I did go to my MSW program straight from undergrad, but um, I think regardless of um, when in your journey you're coming to graduate school, um, exactly what Hannah said is so important. Um, picking a school where there um, are courses and faculty that really light you up inside um, look at the course catalog. Um, if there's nothing at Michigan that excites you, or there's like two electives out of the, you know, hundred, um, uh, that excite you, maybe this isn't the school for you. Um, same thing with other schools. If you're looking at better course catalogs and nothing is really popping out at you, or none of the professors are really like lining up with what you are wanting to, research or what you're wanting to like eventually do with your career, um, really finding a place where you can sort of latch on to those courses and those uh, professors who have some similarities to what you're looking for is going to be super important. Yeah, and just um, picking back off of what Anna and Joe also said, like, I wish I could have reached out more to professors, so don't feel afraid to contact professors, especially if you're interested in their kind of work or the kind of classwork that they're teaching. It really helps um, orient you whether or not um, Michigan is the right place, as well as like reaching out to prospective, um, like we are Michigan Public Health, uh, prospective student discovery events like these. Um, talking with students really helps you get a feel for the culture. Thank you all, these are great questions. Um, we are close to, to time, um, but I, I wanted to just ask a couple things if we can just go through it quickly, just to make sure that we hit on it for everybody. Um, what advice do you four have for, for these students who are probably in the midst of applying right now? Um, any, any lessons learned or things you wish you would have known in regards to the application process? Um, I would say just try to get it done sooner than later. I know there's definitely some barriers sometimes that prevent you from um, getting everything in. But for me, like I know the GRE is not required, but for some of my other schools I was applying to, um, the GRE was required and the dates weren't lining up. So that was kind of a barrier for me and caused stress for me. So I would say just make sure everything's in, verify everything's in um, so that you can just be done with it and hopefully um, see good results soon. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with what Hannah said. Um, try to finish early so you have a little bit of leeway time uh, also for like sanity checks, like grammar, spelling, like the small stuff that like can really stand out in the wrong way if you don't like get those um, ironed out. Um, so like having, you know, just like professors check over your essay, um, offering any comments, suggestions, revisions. I thought that was really helpful, personally speaking. I think it's also really important to remember to let yourself show up in your application. Um, if your application just makes it look like you're, like you're like the perfect fit for uh, the school, it's probably because you're not letting your whole self show up um you know the admissions team wants to get to know you not just to get to know your resume or uh your transcripts they want to get to know who you are to make sure that you're going to be a good fit in this community so don't be afraid of talking about what you're really interested in and why you're interested in it um, most of us come to fields like public health because we have some sort of personal experience that connects us to what we're interested in talk about that, let yourself go there. Thank you guys. Um, as we close out, um, does anybody wanna share anything that they really enjoy or that they especially love about the community or being a student here? 
it's a really close knit environment, which I really like, especially in the School of Public Health. Yeah, I feel like I really lucked out with uh, my cohort. They all come from like a diverse uh, array of backgrounds, but we all get a, uh, along really nicely. And we also support each other outside of class as well as in class. Um, it's like a really tight knit group. Great, thank you all for your time today. I am putting in the chat, um, again, highlighting some of our enrichment sessions that I've shared earlier. Um, these are coming up starting this week, kicking off with public health practice. We'll also have programming next week about our careers team that we've talked a lot about today. Again, touching on certificates and dual degrees and even financial aid. Um, so there's the website and the four sessions are right under um, the Discover More header. Um, so please feel free to take a look at that. Still on the slide here, you can see again, your team of support. So please feel free to reach out to us. We know that it's a lot of information. Um, it's a very um, comprehensive process in general, especially um, entering each individual class that you've ever taken. Um, so please lean on us throughout. Um, again, we wanna remind you that we want you to be part of this community. And as a graduate from the University of Michigan, you'll become part of one of the world's largest alumni networks that we kind of just talked a little bit about. Um, this degree will give you worldwide recognition no matter where life takes you. And as a Michigan public health student, you'll join a top rated program with a long standing tradition of excellence. Our history started back when we were founded in 1941. And believe it or not, um, this is where Blue Cross Blue Shield was created. The National Sanitation Foundation was founded, even where the first Earth Day was held and where uh, the flu mist was invented. And speaking of vaccines, um, the polio vaccine was actually proven safe, potent, and effective at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. So with that, we hope that you will choose to join our long-standing tradition and submit your application. If you do have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to our team. Thanks so much, and we hope you have a great day. Take good care.